The Now 2.5 just landed, and while there are a lot of small quality of life improvements in this release, there are four features that actually change how you'll use it in day-to-day -day development. If you've been juggling permission flags, struggling with repetitive test setup, hacking around WebSocket authentication, or wanting more control over bundling, this update has something for you. If you've been using Dino for a while, you know the permission system is one of its standout features. The problem is, the way most of us manage permissions is chaotic. You run your app with one set of flags, your test with another, maybe your compile step with something else, and pretty soon you've got a mental spreadsheet of permission combinations. Dino 2.5 finally gives us a cleaner way to deal with this via permission profiles. So you can now run commands with predefined permission flags, you can set default profiles, and you can optionally define them within the test batch or compile keys. Testing also got a nice upgrade. Writing tests usually requires some kind of repetitive setup and teardown, especially in larger projects. Until now, you either wrote helper functions and hoped people remembered to call them, or you just duplicated the code across test files. But with Dino 2.5, you get built-in setup and teardown APIs out of the box. This means you can start a mock server once before all tests, reset data before each one, and clean up at the end without reinventing the wheel. WebSockets are getting an upgrade as well. Up until now, if you wanted to pass custom headers when creating a WebSocket connection in Dino, you were out of luck. That made things awkward for authentication or sending session data without dumping it into the URL. But, moving forward, you can now pass a headers object when you create the connection, so you can attach a bearer token, a custom header, or anything else you need, right at the handshake stage. Finally, in 2.4, Dino brought back the bundle command, but now, in 2.5, you can run bundling programmatically from your code. Thanks to a new runtime API, you can now trigger a bundle step inside a script with full control over entry points, output directories, minification, and even plugins. This offers greater flexibility in managing bundling, as you can integrate and embed your bundle step in a variety of workflows. Of course, 2.5 comes packed with a lot of other goodies, and you can check out more details about this release in the blog post linked in the description. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.